everyone told me, you have to go work in Austin or LA or New York. But I was like, no, we can do this here. Puro pincha fiesta, puro pincha party. You need that emotional connection. You need the chemistry. You need the warmth of people. The more you want to be like other people, the bigger of a hole you're going to fall into and you're not going to be able to get out of it. We can raise our voices, make some noise, and actually make things happen because San Antonio is a big little city. My guest today, when I asked her to be on the show I'd yet to create, she simply said, don't make me be the first. <laughs> so now she's the third. <laughs> the unofficial, official queen of San Antonio, my friend, Puro Pinche. I didn't know I had all those titles, but thank you, Andrew. Right. I'm glad to be sitting here with you today. The streets are talking. In the heart of downtown San Antonio. That's right. This, isn't this beautiful? A lot of energy happening here. Oh, yeah. I love being able to see people walking by, things happening, not stuck in the suburbs where we grew up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a great people watching window. This is awesome. Right here, right? Yeah. But that's also a way for them to look in like we're in the zoo or something, like we're the animals. Oh, yeah. Well, they're already doing that, so... <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. Well, and thanks for not making me first on your podcast. Not because I didn't want to, just because it's a, always intimidating to be the first, right? Exactly. You know, what's, <laughs> what's interesting is that we first started working together because you had a podcast. That's true. And I was producing your podcast. That's and now you're true. on my podcast. Yeah, and that was exactly 10 years ago. 10 years ago. <laughs> Who would have known that in the future we all had to have a podcast? <sighs> Probably the person that was hosting the space for our podcast. <laughs> He knew. He knew. Yeah. yeah, he was ahead of his time. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. And ours was actually like a webcast, right? Like oh, yeah. live, stream. live stream. We were on camera. Um, Musical you know, guests. We had guests every week. Yeah. That was definitely something 10 years ago that people weren't really doing yet because they were audio only right. on podcasts. But right. just to see the evolution of that is, is very interesting. It's right. neat. Thanks and for having me. The good times continue. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, Puro Pinche, I've always loved this name. Where did it come from? <laughs> and what does it mean, and what does it mean to you? So, Puro Pinche um, can be taken very little, literally to mean pure F-bomb. <laughs> right? Pinche is very slang. Puro means pure or real or authentic, so that's why we say keep it puro. Um, and uh, pincha is just very, very slang. I've mostly known it to be in Mexican or Mexican-American communities. Um, it can mean anything from the F word to shit to somebody who, when I, when, when I was growing up, I understood the meaning to be somebody who was very tight with their money or cheap. Um, somebody was pincha, right? They were penny pinching. Um, and uh, it is a phrase that has been around for decades. I didn't come up with it. Um, even in San Antonio here, um, some notable musicians came up with Puro Pinche Conjunto and Puro Pinche Blues. Um, Randy Garibay, he came up with Puro Pinche Blues, I believe back in the 80s. They used that phrase up and down, Nogalitos, all different places, but um, it's slang. It's a fun phrase. Um, it really just, for me, it was meant to be open-ended. So it could be a fill in the blank for Puro Pincha, whatever, to showcase and spotlight the cool things going on in San Antonio, mm -hmm. right? So Puro Pincha, North St. Mary's Strip. Puro Pincha, uh, people use it with the Spurs a lot because sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're not. Um, Puro Pincha Fiesta, Puro Pincha Party. We talk about all of those things. Um, but mine was really built to showcase local culture, right? We wanted to showcase all the underground people doing things that were very Puro. And then my friend Brenda came up with, you know, Puro San Antonio, which was meant to talk about all the, all the funny tongue in cheek parts of San Antonio, you know, wearing um, chanclas and shorts to Nyosa, even though you know you're gonna get beer spilt all over you, um, wearing shrimp earrings, um, you know, going to the market square, but things that we really lived, not things that we were trying to poke fun of, you know, or make fun of, but just the things that we know and love about San Antonio and Chicano culture, Latino culture here in San Antonio. So Puro Pincha and Puro San Antonio were taking off at the same time. Um, and we were really starting to get noticed um, in the social space because I hadn't seen Puro Pincha in a social media space before then. Um, you know, I was the first to grab the handles um, I started on Tumblr, 
um, started, you know, using Puro Pincha um, digitally in our local community, people say it all the time. You know, people say it from here down into Mexico, California, wherever you can find Mexicans, you can find Puro Pincha. <laughs> I understand that the people were saying things about San Antonio that was nothing to yeah. do here, and then you decided to take it upon yourself and create something that could connect uh, your average San Antonian to understand, hey, there's more going on here than you actually thought. Yeah. So people thought San Antonio was a sleepy little city, right? They thought um, San Antonio was lame. Um, especially when you were younger, you know, people, when you are younger, people want to go out, they want to explore, they want to meet new people, socialize, go to parties and concerts, and everyone thought, oh, well, you have to go to Austin to do that. You know, there's none of that in San Antonio, which I knew to be um, completely untrue. I'm born and raised San Antonian, and I knew, you know, I could go to North St. Mary's for live music. I had been going to the White Rabbit since I was, like, 15 years old. And now I'm really dating myself, right? Like, North St. Mary's uh, Brewing Co. had just changed, and there was Wacky's Deli where Limelight was, and, like, everything was exciting and fun, and there were so many little pockets of San Antonio where you could go experience music and then you could go to blue star and experience art and first friday first friday has been going on forever also um but if you lived in the suburbs like most people do in san antonio you may not have known where to find those things or if you lived outside of 410 or outside of 1604 you know you're looking for that culture or for that entertainment but maybe didn't know how to find it so i saw that you know other cities like new york brooklyn austin l.a they had all these websites that were dedicated to entertainment and culture for people in their city. And I thought, we need to have that here. You know, not that there wasn't um, local newspapers and all weeklies and other people talking about things, but to get into those media outlets, you had to pay, you had to advertise. Um, and for a lot of people in San Antonio who, you know, are working class or making, you know, mid-range income you know they didn't have the funds to put that money into it so people were printing flyers you know hand making flyers right. they were um you know trying to text all their friends like come to this show go to this so i thought let me put this into a digital list a space right i was a, a little bit inspired by show list austin and do 512 because at the time they ruled South by Southwest, ACL, all the big festival spaces, and told you everything that was going on in the city in a simple list. And I was like, you know what? That's the easiest way to find things. It doesn't cost a lot of money to type out a list. Um, you really don't have to pay for like web hosting and things like that on sites like Tumblr or MySpace or then Facebook came around. Um, but I really wanted to show everybody that the, the culture and the nightlife and the art and entertainment and music and food, it was all here already. We just needed a platform to have it all in one place to make it easy for people to find, right? People want convenience. They want to click one thing and find everything. And they always have since the internet was invented. It's not new, right? We've gotten um, a lot quicker. We only pay attention to things for a few seconds now before we click off the page. But I really wanted to have a one source for people to find everything that was going on in San Antonio community. I think I did a really good job because it started on Tumblr. It started getting reblogged hundreds of times. People would start sending me their events. Can you share my events? Can you post about this? Um, and that was just on a web page, right? And so it took off and then it started evolving into, can you come to my event? Can you share about it while you're here? Um, all the way up to like, local news stations reaching out to me saying, can you come talk about what's going on in San Antonio on our news channel? Um, and then turned into like, can you come make videos while you're out on the scene? You know, and, and we kind of came up with those concepts mm -hmm. too, you know, like we had Puro Pincha on the scene and we would go out and show people a taste of what these events were like so they could feel connected and see there's real humans there. Um, people want to be where other people are or be able to relate to I like that music or that art looks cool or that food looks delicious. Let me go there now. Um, you know, we had Puro Pincha on the scene. That was really fun and brought more people together. I started getting more followers, more um, events to work with, partner and promote. Started tapping into having my own events. 
Um, and that was everything from booking a band at a venue, um, rest in peace, limelight, and uh, just having happy hours and mixers, um, you know, bringing people together for all kinds of causes. And then it, I worked my way up to having co-founded a big music festival here in San Antonio. So I know we talk about it a lot, you and I do. Right. <laughs> you know, I was one of the original founders of Maverick Music Festival, uh, which doesn't exist anymore, but you can find traces of it online. Um, it was one of the first indie alternative music festivals in downtown San Antonio. Um, and I think it really opened the door for a lot of other people to know that a festival like that will work here in San Antonio. People started coming in from out of town to have festivals. Um, they started wanting to work on more festivals together. Like, oh, wow, you know, like, yes, maybe there, we know there's all these musicians in San Antonio, but we can put them together in one place. When we had Maverick and we were a part of Maverick um, in 2013, downtown was in the decade of downtown. So at the time, Mayor Julian Castro was here. He was focusing on getting people back into downtown, living here, working here, playing here. There was a big push to get everybody. Oh, I don't know if you were a part of, like, there was the downtown kickball league. Like, there were all these, like, social meetups and clubs, and downtown was thriving. There was a lot of action happening. A lot of action here. happening. Houston Street was mm -hmm. alive That's and right. popping. And, you know, there was always something to do downtown. There were clubs. There were you know, music venues, concerts, mm. stopped skipping over us and they were yeah. coming back to San Antonio. And I think there was a really big push for that. And it helped me see what people in San Antonio wanted and where, where they wanted to be and what they could afford. You know, like we, I talked about, um, you know, just like affordability for people and why I started Puro Pincho was so I wanted to give more access for people to do things and not feel like they had to spend the gas to drive an hour away or get a babysitter or mm. get a hotel um, or just pay outrageous concert ticket prices, right? Um, pay for super expensive dinners um, when there were so many other choices that were affordable for the majority. So we, it, it helped me understand more of the city, more of people going out where they live in the city, um, and really just push me into evolving, you know, and past what I thought I wanted to do originally, which was, I just want to work in the music industry, you know, like I, I have to leave. Everyone told me mm -hmm. you have to go work in Austin or LA or New York That's or right. wherever, you know, like you need to leave. But I was like, no, we can do this here. You know, like San Antonio used to be a music, a bigger live music city than Austin. You know, like we had Chicano right. soul artists that were born out of San Antonio that toured around the country. Mm -hmm. um, we had people on national, um, you know, night shows, TV shows, mm -hmm. soul train, all kinds of things. That's there right. were people coming out of San Antonio producing music that paved the way for a lot of things that happened around the country. And I'm glad we still have people that are my age hanging on to those things today and starting new record labels and mm -hmm. touring companies. Um, but we, we really had that buzz in San Antonio for years before. And then in the 80s, there was another wave of music. You know, yeah. 70s and 80s, we brought... Heavy metal. Heavy metal rock, capital of the world. Heavy metal capital of the world, um, which sometimes I wish we still were, you yeah, know? I'm not like, seeing enough black t-shirts anymore. <laughs> there's there's not. Uh, I don't see the long hair and black t-shirts. Well, we had the White Rabbit, right? And we that was such Rabbit. a pivotal place right. that drew in so many artists that went on to be huge. Oh, yeah. It was a great, mm -hmm. like, like we said, you know, we went there when we were teenagers mm -hmm. and we saw, you know, bands that were just on their first That's tour right. and then went off to play yeah. arenas and stadiums and tour the world. World, That's right. And the White Rabbit was a great anchor for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you can say, like, when the White Rabbit closed, there was a whole shift right. of culture in San Antonio. It was just the time period, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 80s, everything right. was popular with rock, heavy metal, Tejano was yeah. king. Oh, you know, yes. we had Emilio and Selena. Selena. Everybody, we have the Tejano Music Awards. Everything was going on here. Late 90s, early 2000s, things started changing again. Um, I do think that the St. Mary's Strip is a really good indicator of where we are, like, culturally with music and pop culture and trends because there's so many different types of, like, bars and venues and restaurants on mm -hmm. that street, and it compares us to what's going on in the rest of the country, um, who's coming to visit, who's touring, uh, is there a chef stopping by and mm -hmm. popping up, things like that. Um, and, you know, that evolved into Paper Tiger and now we have this young generation, you know, Lonesome Rose. There's young 
honky tonk country rap hip hop cool. trap musicians coming in changing our city but we still have really big musicians and artists especially art right San Antonio is an, an art capital coming out of San Antonio making national headlines and um, I think that's where where we are as far as what I talk about now with Quito Pincha. The people that are making magic happen behind the scenes, the local business owners, the chefs, the musicians, the talent. I like to think Quito Pincha was a small part of it in pushing the underground DIY local scene to the forefront through social media, through marketing, and now all eyes are on San Antonio. Like The country is still watching us. They're trying to see what we're doing, and especially because we do have so many um, people of color, and people with Latino backgrounds that are making waves. You know, everybody wants to talk about, oh, Pedro Pascal went to school here, and he, you know, he said San Antonio has better breakfast tacos, and Peso Pluma went to school for a few yeah. years here, and you know, it's like San Antonio has this huge connection Absolutely. to the rest of the country, um, and it's really important that we continue to spotlight that, talk about people, and um, not just focus on the Wemby's of the world. Like, we love Wemby, right? We're glad he's here, and now we're finally getting some much-needed national attention when it comes to, like, NBA and sports and other people coming here. But all of that has been here. Like, we just need to come together to show it off in a really big way. <laughs> Did I answer your question? <laughs> What's really quite remarkable is that from this humble beginning, you've grown such a huge network. Oh. So you, now you're going all over the country, you're going to all these different cities. What is it about San Antonio that's so different than everywhere else in the country? Oh, man. Well, um, I, do, I do think San Antonio is really unique. Uh, you know, I kind of touched on this. Even though we are 70% uh, Latino and most people would say, oh, well, that's not diverse at all. Um, that background came about because of so much diversity, right? Like Texas used to be Mexico. Uh, there were so many influences on Texan culture. You know, obviously our indigenous roots are here and still here. Um, lots of people here that are native to the land. And uh, we have Spanish people that came in, German people, um, you know, a lot of like French people. There's so many different cultures here. We have a lot of Asian influence in San Antonio, um, African American, like people have come from all over to make San Antonio this huge melting pot. And when I was when in elementary school, right, there were five military bases that were open and active. And I saw people from all over the world living right here in San Antonio. And because of its charm and its like welcoming nature and hospitality, right? Our whole city is built off hospitality and tourism and welcoming people. Um, a lot of those people stayed here, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I know people from elementary school, middle school that maybe their parents were in the military and they decided to retire here or come back here or work here. And I think our history, you know, has just paved the way for us to be a city that is uh, open, inviting, welcoming. We want people here for now. <laughs> we know Austin likes to tell people again, tongue in cheek, like don't move here, you know, because so many people have moved to Austin right. in the last 10, 15 years um, that it's just, they've felt the shift, right? They, mm -hmm. They're fighting so hard to hang on to their culture in Austin right. where we're fighting here too, but not as hard because so many people still embrace it. And, that, and that's actually like, what people say is a flaw of San Antonio, right? We're mm -hmm. hanging on to the old school. Right. We're hanging on to the traditional. Like, we have too many 10 buildings downtown. Right. But I think that's part of what makes San Antonio unique. I think we really have a good mix of old school, new school. We have older generations that fought so hard, worked so hard for the changes in our city that are still around. Um, the, you know, the civil rights movement was not that long ago in the 60s, and especially for Chicanos across the country, like, that happened here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So you still see people fighting for those rights and organizations that were around then that are still around today and now recruiting younger people, and younger people are starting their own organizations mm -hmm. right here out of Texas that are, you know, making national headlines. Like, we, as far as, like, voter rights, right, we have Move Texas, and they are, they are known nationally for their voter registration mm -hmm. with youth. We have always had that, like, fight inside us in San Antonio to, like, remain relevant, um, 
to pave the way and change change that the struggles that we're going through to help make it um, easier for people and more accessible. And everyone come to San Antonio. Like, if you're watching this and you're not here, come visit us, right? Like, we want people to be here. <laughs> so, we, so we have Austin just an hour and a half from us. Yeah. And so much has changed, as we just talked about. Yeah. And they had this keep Austin weird. And what they were trying to say there is, like, keep the cultural, keep the diversity yeah. there. And we've had so many people move in an international way that the culture has shifted so fast. Right. Right. And I think the rebuttal there was keep San Antonio lame. Yeah. And I, and I think the guys who came up with that were kind of like, hey, don't pay attention to what's happening over here. Like, yeah. ignore this. And San Antonio has been a slow growing For uh, sure. city. And that's what's allowed it to keep its charm. But in the last, let's say, 10 years, even 20 years, there's been a huge migration to Central Texas. Right. How does San Antonio keep that cultural diversity, that uniqueness, that makes people interested in, in the city to begin with without losing it to just a variety of cultures that come in and, and kind of make everything cultureless in many ways. Yeah. We need to get better as a city, city government and citizens of working together on these roots and causes, right? Like we need to get better about supporting local. Uh, we need to get better about shopping local. Mm -hmm. We need to get better about investing in local companies um, and businesses and artists. Uh, just this week, I had to post on social media. I had to share three notable restaurants um, closing announcements, uh, which is really hard. Wow. You know, for San Antonio to lose three restaurants in one week, mm -hmm. in one month. They're all closing this month and they've been around a couple years, five yeah. years, seven years, each one. Yeah. And then turn around and know that like, this franchise just opened down the street. This franchise just opened around the corner. Right. And there's another new shopping um, intersection that has all of the out of town chains. And while I appreciate that San Antonio can be known as Franchise City because we are giving so many opportunities for people to own their own business and mm -hmm. make their own incomes and leave their family, you know, with a legacy, with money, uh, we need to get better about supporting local. Mm -hmm. And that has to come from everywhere, from where you shop, um, where you eat, where you send your kids to school. We need more funding for public schools, right? SAISD just announced they're closing 15 schools wow. which is horrible um we have uh we need investment in um downtown in infrastructure and in housing we need all of those things um in order to make it work it can't just be one section or the other right? right like we can't just say oh well you know if you had better parking downtown then people would come downtown right. because that's not the factor that's keeping people from downtown um can you afford to stay in a, in, a, in a hotel downtown? Can you afford to live in an apartment downtown? Is there a grocery store downtown? Can you walk on a sidewalk that's not completely broken? Is there construction free areas of downtown um, to bring people back to the heart of the city? But then it, it goes everywhere, right? Like it's not fair that one prominent side of town gets their roads fixed and their schools built and their um, new restaurants, you know, up in months. And other parts of the city are waiting years or decades mm -hmm. for that. We all need to be invested in that. We need um, to give uh, you know more funding, more access to funding. We need to teach people how to find funding. Mm -hmm. That is like the number one thing people ask me all the time. Like, where can I find money to do this? Right. And I'm not an expert on where to find financial resources. I can point people to different organizations that are helping out. Um, but especially like in arts and culture, right? I do get a lot of musicians and artists that come to me and ask me where they can get help raising money for this project they want to work right. on, what they want to do. You've even asked me where we can find those, right? Like right. when we first started, like you have films, you have, uh, right. you know, people want to open studios. They want to have That's production right. companies. Where do they find that? And mm -hmm. so many people just don't know where to go. Right. Um, and San Antonio is a very word of mouth town. You know, you have to talk to people, you have to know people, but um, you have to make those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, but we need that to be accessible to everybody. Like, it can't just be a handshake That's or right. a, a conversation that you had with somebody and then you're, you're, uh, people are gatekeeping that information, right? It needs right. to be open information, knowledge that anyone can access. Um, and we have a big digital divide in San Antonio, so it needs to be accessible in every way possible, right? Like, 
put it in the libraries, put it in the grocery stores, put it where you go get gas at the gas station. Like I, it's dumb, but like I pay attention to what's showing on gas station videos oh, yeah, because too. sometimes it's really important information mm-hmm. that I, I don't have cable, right? right? I don't have the, um, I don't really listen to the radio as much as I should. Um, and I don't have like, uh, streaming apps all the time, right. like in the car or at home. So how else are you going to get that information? It needs to be right in front of where everybody goes. And we need to help people learn about um, how to help each other out because San Antonio really struggles with that. Um, we have a lack of resources. We have a lack of funding. And, I, and I'm not saying anything about people not working on it because there have been so many people working behind the scenes on this forever. Right. Um, And it's not just our local elected officials. It's so many people outside of our elected officials that are working on that. But we really need to find, like, a cohesive way for people to work together on these things. It can't just be out of ego. It can't be select groups. It Mm -hmm. can't be um, something because it's going to benefit me, right? You have to remove the ego from that and just, like, open it to everybody. Right, and I think you're a perfect testament for that, and myself included with some of the things we've been doing lately, Yeah, is we can't put all of these burdens on the city officials to handle right. them themselves. Yeah. Because they have so many things that they're working on, and there's just too much. Yeah. And there's a lot of oversight with yeah. that. So you're being a great testament, and you saw there being a need here in the community. You know, how can somebody get involved with making a difference in their city? You know, seeing you yeah. have come from, you know, you just saw a problem. Nobody knew who you were, so you took it upon yourself to say, let me just post right. some sh- local shows that are happening yeah. so people will know what's going on in the city. How can somebody else take action in the city to, to do something great? I think the great part about living in this uh, big small town is that you can still uh, create a new path, right? You can start something completely new or you can just do something that is unique or specific to yourself. You don't have to reinvent any wheels. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of room for everybody still in San Antonio. And um, that is that is a testament to what I started, right? So I've had Puro Pincha unofficially 15 mm-hmm. years, officially under that name 13 years. And when I first started, there was not a lot like me. Um, my whole goal was to get more things like what I was doing because I didn't want people to feel alone or not have mm-hmm. a place. And I didn't really know anybody. <clears throat> My parents knew me <laughs> and loved me. <laughs> I mean, so I went to, like, back in the day when I went to high school, <laughs> there were not as many high schools, right? So a lot of people, hunt, you know, there would be 500, 600 people in these classes mm-hmm. of high schools in each grade because right. there weren't so many high schools. And everybody got to know each other through a high school because that was your area, where you lived. Obviously, we've learned about things like redlining and how cities are divided, but that is where we knew um, where people came from as far as like money or their cultural background. Right. And the main reason why everybody asks when you meet someone in San Antonio, where did you go to, high, you go to high school? school? Right? Like, that is the question. That's like nobody your ecosystem says, defines you exactly. at that moment. And nobody says, like, where'd you go to college or where did you work or what neighborhood? Right. You know, they're like, where'd you go to high school? Because they can determine a lot about you based off of your high school mm-hmm. area and your community. Um, so I think that I knew a lot of people in school. I was very shy, very timid in school. And then I got to know and love music. Like, my parents taught me this great love of music. And I wanted to work in the music industry, but I knew I couldn't leave San Antonio. Um, I, like a lot of other people, had a son when I was young. I was 20 years Mm -hmm. old. And it wasn't easy for me to just say, oh, well, I want to work in music. I'm going to go to Orlando. I'm going to go to Los Angeles. I'm going to go to New York, right? Like, I wanted to do that, but I knew I couldn't leave. I didn't Mm -hmm. have the funds to pay 50000 a year to go to school and afford to pay for me and my son to live somewhere and have help with him, right? I had to stay here. So I said, okay, like I am determined to show people all the good music, arts, culture here in San Antonio, even if it's just in this local underground scene and more people can get people to their show, people to their art gallery, people to their restaurant, because I spread the word about it. I didn't charge them any money to do it, right? Like, I know a lot of people don't have the means to advertise in San Antonio, Mm -hmm. so let me help them out. 
I was just really passionate about it. I wanted people to know the city that I grew up with. So mm-hmm. my when I was little, my mom and dad worked in the curio shops in the Mercado, right? Mm-hmm. So we were always around all of the um, Tejano bands that were coming through, the mariachi bands that were playing. Um, my mom and dad went to Tejano dancing every weekend. They saw all the big artists. Sometimes they would take me, you know, they took me to all the downtown concerts, to Nayosa, to La Semana Alegre. I went with them all the time. So I was used to seeing mu- live music in this downtown setting mm-hmm. from the time I was a baby. And then when I got to like adult years, I didn't see that so much anymore. And then I was like, where is it? I know mm-hmm. it's here. I have to find it. Um, you know, I, I went to St. Mary's when I was, we talked about this, I went to the White Rabbit when I was a teenager, but I was like, there has to be more than the North St. Mary's Strip, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's so many people around the whole city that are doing things. So I just started going out, and I started driving to those places, going to the art galleries, going to the shows, going to shops, finding out there's local shopping. I didn't just have to go to Ingram Park Mall all the time, you know, like, there's local restaurants to eat at. That's that's hard when you're tough, too. You're like, you know, especially in San Antonio, there's taquerias and a few restaurants, but you don't know the expanse of it because you're not really traveling to all parts of the city to go find it. Now that's what everybody does, right? Everybody is like, Yelp, Google, right. you know, where do I find the next newest, coolest thing? Yeah. Um, but we didn't have that technology. We didn't know where to do it. So you physically had to get out and experience it for yourself. And through that is where I made all of these amazing relationships. I met business owners, small business owners, mm-hmm. music venue owners, promoters, artists, musicians, elected officials, people in city departments, people doing things. You know, like I, I got to know so many people that were behind the scenes making things happen so much that I ended up working in city council. Um, you know, I, I got to know people through doing projects and in the arts and culture industry that I got hired through city council to work on special projects through city council. So that really opened my eyes to seeing like, this is like a citizen's world, right? Like the staffers are making changes. They're doing the work. We can call in, we can go to an office, we can go to a neighborhood, we can, you know, raise our voices, make some noise and actually make things happen because San Antonio is a big little city like mm-hmm. even though we have close to two million people we can still make things happen right. we have to get in the right doors or be connected to people but as long i think if you physically try to do those things um whether it's outreach on social media mm-hmm. making a phone call going to meetups going to mixers going to like neighborhood association meetings um here right like you want to go to geekdom you want to go to um there's there's different now there's different spaces around the city um where you can have these hubs of working together of meeting Mm -hmm. people um and there's so many ways to meet people in san antonio but san antonio hangs on to the old school right so we still have to meet in person you can message them online you can call them online email them but you still have to make that connection in person to build on that relationship and help make change it just goes to show you that not everything is on the internet. Not everything is on the internet. Right, and I was just thinking about that the other day. <laughs> there's so much that's not on the internet. Right. You know, and this human connection, for me, I, it's very important that we continue to hold on to that and continue to cultivate yeah. those relationships with other people as the digital um, frontier begins to grow around us, oh, and yeah. especially this next generation, yeah. and the way that they're just engulfed in the digital world, and how do we make sure that they still have these interpersonal yeah. relationships and these skills to be able to you know engage uh with others i know i'm talking about this a lot but it's the most recent thing that i was involved in i i went to dc as part of a google next generation policy leaders program right and so people from all over the country that are working in different causes and organizations uh civil rights human rights repro rights educational rights everything right learning to come together and um, organize, uh, activate, you know, be more involved digitally, right, through tech. We're there with Google. Our learning about um, inclusiveness, diversity, but those are all keywords. We're jumping into AI. Our whole, our whole summit was about AI and how it's going to affect marginal communities, right? Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect us the most. Mm-hmm. Everything does, and we, we have to get in front of it. We can't be left behind in it. But AI doesn't work uh, without 
AI is meant to be a tool, not a replacement Mm -hmm. for human beings, right? So that is what we have to grasp right now. There's always going to be a new technology. There's always going to be something to jump onto that digitally connects us to everybody. But the human element is what makes sure it's right, makes sure it's ethical, makes sure it's moral, makes sure we have that um, deeper understanding of the tool that we're using. And so, like, at the very end of our summit, um, they brought a wellness expert to talk to us because we're all so connected there's so many horrible things going on in the world right now, um, and we are fighting the biggest battles, right? A lot mm-hmm. of these people are doing the hardest work behind the scenes, and you'll never see them, and it's emotionally tasking. But what the therapist told us was that nothing can beat the human connection. So whether you you know, do all of your work, you're always online, go take the time to regenerate, re- recuperate, whatever, heal, get some social time in, in person with human beings, Mm -hmm. right? Like go to a social hour, go Mm -hmm. to a hike, a walk with your friends, go to a library, like read together, just go to events together, spend time, call each other, FaceTime each other, um, you know, like actually get off the digital space. And and that's not easy for everybody, right? Like that does also come from a place of privilege and saying that Mm -hmm. you can just go out and be physically in front of someone because not everybody has that um but you need that connection Mm -hmm. you need that emotional connection you need the chemistry you need the warmth of people um to keep you going and i think that is what is the best about san antonio like i can go eat by myself i can go to a concert by myself i can go to the library i can go to a city council meeting there's always going to be somebody there and most of the time they're always willing to talk you may not agree with everybody i keep saying this because i've learned so much from trolls on the internet (laughs) um but people want to be acknowledged that is the root of all the conversations right they just want to know that they're being seen and heard and um you can make a big difference when you do that in person with people and I think San Antonio is such a great place. Like, just walking down Houston Street, right? You can you can run into everybody from the person that's working, you know, um, at Bohannon's, at the Majestic. You can run, run into the mayor. You can run into mm-hmm. the tech uh, company owners. You that's can right. run into the Alamo descendants. <laughs> you can run into, you know, all the people visiting from all around the world because they want to see the, the Alamo and the river walk and... Houston Street is a great example of being able to experience all walks of life. And you can talk to people, you know, like I did notice in different cities, right? Like D.C., everybody is uh, very formal. Everyone is either working, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, business talk. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of politics talk Mm -hmm. like that's everywhere. And then New York, everybody's in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And Los Angeles a lot I'm I'm stereotyping all the right, cities, right? right? But, sure but stereotypes right. for a reason, right? Yeah. Like there are general generalities. Yeah. Um, you know, Los Angeles people love the sun and they wanna be seen and they wanna right. be outdoors. But I just feel like we have, you know, a very laid back, casual atmosphere here in San Antonio where you can still just say hello and have conversations with people. Um, and we're still very welcoming and inviting and we're a city built around hospitality. So you know, you're going to get that most of the time. When you meet people, you'll be able to talk to them. You can even talk about the issues that you're passionate about. Um, San Antonio is a pretty progressive city, um, and there's a lot of things that can be discussed um, on both sides, you know. But um, I just think we're, we're in a really great place to make a lot of change, to set examples for the rest of the country. Um, and it all starts here locally and getting to know each other individually. And, and so social media and all these things you've talked about, media, yeah. AI, where we're going, that's such a big part of our culture now. Mm-hmm. And I would say you're probably an expert in the social media <laughs> world now. What are some of the things that you can teach us about both how to interact and how to get our message out there, but also where's the future going? Like what do we need to know and be prepared for? Well, I'm going to have to charge you for that information, Andrew. <laughs> um, <clears throat> transparency is key 
I've always 100% believed in being transparent. I think the more you try to gatekeep and the more you try to hide and think everybody is competition, um, the more isolated you're going to be. The more you make authentic connections, op- offer up knowledge, obviously within the understanding that you're not working for free, right? Like everyone needs to get paid. They need to get paid with their worth and valued. Um, but there are things that you can generally talk to people about and help people out with and you don't have to charge for everything but those conversations will help go a long way and you never know when you'll meet your next client or business connection or paid partnership Um, and then being authentic I think people just need to remember to be true to themselves because the more you want to be like other people the bigger of a hole you're going to fall into and you're not going to be able to get out of it so Mm -hmm. you're going to continue to go down a path that's unnatural for you And you won't know how to grow from there, Mm -hmm. right? Like you're just, you'll end up stuck Mm -hmm. because you've tried so hard to be like so, so many other people and you don't know what those other people are really doing behind the scenes. Yeah. And they, everyone on the internet makes it look like things are a hundred percent different than they actually are. Right. So yeah. It's the world's greatest life. Yes. Yeah. It's so, so good. (laughs) Even me, like it's. I don't put a lot of personal information out there. Just I've learned over the years, like sometimes it is scary Mm -hmm. and um, people don't always have the best intentions, right? Like there's always bad players out there. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do think it's, there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable. There's nothing wrong with being authentic. There's nothing wrong with making real friendships um, that it doesn't always have to be a business connection Mm -hmm. or um, social climbing or like how can I get to the next level through knowing this person Um, and then I always think it's a great thing to reach out like reach out to that person that you maybe want to work with or learn from not everybody's going to respond to you or answer you right but if you can get to know someone and get to know about what their why what they're doing you know like people do ask me all the time like why did you start Puro Pincha why do you have Puro Pincha like what do you want to do because they want to know more about how everything got so connected. Right. How, you know, things in San Antonio came into this light, you know, and showcased people and how they can do it too. And for me, that was always my greater purpose, right? Like showcase the amazingness of my hometown, my city, Mm -hmm. and I want more people to do it. To me, I don't see it as competition because I am paving my own way, learning. I, every day I have to keep up with new social media trends, new business trends, how to make money, all of those things. So I think, it, you know, being transparent, being authentic, and not being afraid to reach out to people, ask them if they have time for coffee. If they say, I have absolutely no time for you in real life, do you have time for a call? Do you have time for a chat or an email? And then you'll find out, you know, and, and don't give up with one person because now we have access to billions of people on the internet, right? So I don't think people, it's hard not to take things personal. Mm-hmm. I myself take things personal a lot too, but it, it's really not. It's, we just, we're so limited in this time that we have here on earth and we can only accomplish so many things or talk to so many people and meet so many people. But um, my DMs are always open. <laughs> So people, you know, I love to get questions. People still ask me all the time, like, where can I take my my family who's visiting from out of town? You know, how can I be a volunteer somewhere? How can I get involved? What if I want to run for office? What can I do? And I, all I can do is just direct them to the right place. And it doesn't, t- it doesn't hurt me or take anything away from me to connect them with right. somebody and uh, help them be successful too. I know I'm always texting you where to go <laughs> in town. Everyone is, but you the most. <laughs> Speaking of, where can people find you? How can they connect? So, um, puro pincha, right? I can spell it out because pincha is not a common word for everybody, but P-U-R-O-P-I-N-C-H-E. I'm on probably every social media app you can think of, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, formerly known as Twitter, threads um pinterest tiktok i have an email info at purupincha.com hopefully i don't get spam um and then if you see me in real life i love for people to say hello um you know just introduce themselves um let me know what they do who they are how they you know 
what high school they went to. <laughs> um, and then I am on KSAT, um, which is San Antonio's uh, news channel, um, on Friday evenings at 6.30 p.m. And I talk about my poodle pics, which is my free list of upcoming entertainment uh, and events every week in San Antonio. And I talk about that on air um, on Fridays at 6.30. And then I post every week um, that list so people can just have fun in San Antonio and find it for free. <laughs> so last thing, 2024 and beyond, what is the one thing you want to see San Antonio do? Where do you want to see it grow to? Oh my goodness. I have so many hopes and dreams for San Antonio. I don't know if there's one thing. Um, Give me a feeling. What do you <laughs> sense happening? I want to see more people be involved in their local community and whether that is uh, joining a board, a committee, getting out people to vote. We have a huge election year in 2024 and Texas is a really hard state to live in. Um, I mentioned this, we're fortunate that San Antonio is more of a progressive, compassionate city, um, but we don't have everything right in San Antonio. And there's a lot of uh, towns around us that are hurting because we don't have enough of a, a reach and we can all help each other by voting and by don't be uh, disillusioned and don't think that your vote doesn't matter because it does vote for the local leaders that are going to make the changes all the way up, right? Like, I think that's a big thing. A lot of people don't vote. I hate to hear people say, well, that's just how San Antonio is. They don't mm. care enough. They don't vote. That's not true. It's a very systemic thing. And we have to get past that and we have to go out and meet each other where we're at. Um, and I want to see like a huge, huge, huge Budo festival next year. <laughs> Even Excellent. though you don't make any money off of them. It's all good. I want you to see will. everybody they come together and keep it real and have a great time in San Antonio. Excellent. Well, we're so appreciative to have Thank had you, you and your wisdom to be sh sharing with everybody. And we look forward to all the amazing things you're going to do in next year and beyond. Well, I appreciate you having me as one of your first top 10 guests That's in right. the podcast. And, uh, you know. Thank you for being a part of Puro Pincha all those years ago. Well, it won't, it won't be the end. There's, there's more to come. Keep Absolutely. It okay. 